This last patch was one of the greatest patches that we have ever had in Escape from Tarkov. Where is all the hype? Why is no one talking about it? Am I the only one who's excited? Oh shit! You might be thinking, why would I say that when we have gameplay that puts you at a disadvantage as bad as this? Well, it's not the game's fault, it's mine. But even if that's the case, why would this patch, whose notes I can fit on the palm of my hand, be such a good patch? The two words that everyone blames their death on. Neckcode. Hello everyone, if you don't already know me, this is CZTL, and that is the intro I would have given if Tarko's netcode issues were solved in the last patch. But have they? Let's take a look. Let's start off by going over how I was able to do this analysis. Around two weeks before last patch, I'd gone into co-op offline raids and taken some footage of things you might see during close quarters encounters from two different perspectives. I was able to sync it within around 10 to 20 milliseconds of each other by overlaying the time at the start of the clips. I would then take a picture of both monitors to capture and adjust for any discrepancies. I'm sure some of my other developer friends out there understand and appreciate the difficulties in time synchronization. Both computers are set to record at 60 FPS and are able to reliably get that in-game with DLSS enabled. During some of the clips, I even had an overlay of my mouse and keyboard which makes the analysis much more interesting. This synchronized footage allows me to break down how things were working prior to the netcode changes of last patch. So I did some of the same tests after the patch was installed to compare the changes. I selected the same servers, both high ping and low ping, one being around 125 to 140 ping in raid, and the other being a stable 30 milliseconds. Unfortunately, I don't have any clips of packet loss prior to the patch, but I will include it in my post-patch analysis. Each set of results was gathered over multiple days to help ensure robust findings. I'll share the results by first showing you a sample clip and breaking it down, followed by a summary gathering 20 data points from each of the five results sets. And in case you didn't catch it from my methodology piece, these two players are on two different computers, hooked into the same ethernet switch, directly into the modem, sitting right next to each other, and we're in co-op offline raids. Let's start this fun off by reviewing two players with an average ping of 30 milliseconds pre-patch. Yeah, we're gonna have to slow this way down. We're gonna first focus on movement here. From player one is the peaker on the left and player two on the right. Player one will move until he can see the corner of player two's head, which is 330 milliseconds into the clip. We'll then see how long it takes for him to see player two's full head, which turns out to be 50 milliseconds after. As you can see, player one has barely moved on player two's screen. Now we will see when player 2 can barely see the corner of player 1's head. That's 170 milliseconds after player 1 could see his head. And to see the full head, it's 286 milliseconds after player 1 could see player 2's full head. That's absolutely terrible. Now player 1 strays across the door and can still see player 2's full head at 1165 milliseconds and can no longer see it at 1000. 218 milliseconds, taking 53 milliseconds to get to cover. There's an interesting thing to note here. In the frames when player 1 is going behind the wall, his screen goes blurry again after the initial aim punch, most likely because DLSS uses the prior frames. 1298 milliseconds is the last time that player 2 can see player 1's full head, and it takes player 2 133 milliseconds to no longer see player 1. That is weird. It takes double as long to see the peaking player, but it takes them a little bit more than double as long to get back into cover. Very odd. I wonder if that's intended. Now let's break down the combat mechanics. In the combat section, we're mainly going to focus on player 2's actions, because they get the first shot off. You can see them first click the mouse button 616 milliseconds into the clip. 67 milliseconds later, you'll notice the muzzle flash on player 2's screen, confirming the shot being registered. Still on player 2's screen, 50 milliseconds later, notice a line coming up where the shot landed, signaling a ricochet or something, confirming a hit. Now look at player 1's perspective just before the hit registers on them, with the next frame blurring the vision 50 milliseconds after player 2's screen showed a hit. Now here's the worst part. We're defying physics here because we don't see a muzzle flash until 167 milliseconds after we were hit. So to summarize this clip, there's a large delay from pulling the trigger until you see a muzzle flash. 
67 milliseconds, but I'll use the muzzle flash as a reference. If I were to speculate, this is to make the game seem more smooth when dissecting footage like this, but they didn't anticipate someone like me who overlays their cursor on their screen. Anyways, if we use player 2's muzzle flash as a starting point, his shot takes 100 milliseconds to hit player 1, and player 1 doesn't see his shot until 260 milliseconds after player 2 in this clip. And in terms of movement, player 2 lags behind player 1 by 286 milliseconds. That is crazy. And again, these results are on servers where I have an average ping between 29 and 30 milliseconds. Here's the summary after analyzing 20 samples repatch at roughly 29 milliseconds ping. The fastest it took us to see another player was 212 milliseconds, with an average of 248 milliseconds and a max time of 318 milliseconds. Seeing the other player's shot, we had a minimum of 250 milliseconds with a max time of 350 milliseconds and an average of 285 milliseconds. I find this very, very bad. However, hit registration was pretty good with an average of 104 milliseconds, a minimum time of 83 milliseconds, and a maximum time of 250 milliseconds. Now, let's see how things have changed since the networking patch Battlestate Games introduced by analyzing a post-patch clip with 32 milliseconds average ping. In this clip, player two will be strafing across and then gets shot by player one. We'll start off by analyzing movement. Player two can see the corner of player one's head at 51 milliseconds into the clip. At 86 milliseconds, player two can see player one's full head. Player one cannot see the corner of player two's head until 268 milliseconds in, or 217 milliseconds after player two could see the corner of player one's head. It takes player 1 until 368 milliseconds into the clip to see player 2's full head, or 282 milliseconds after player 2 can see player 1's full head. Again, this is absolutely terrible because it gives player 2 about 250 milliseconds of peaker's advantage. Regardless, 648 milliseconds is the last time that player 2 can fully see player 1's head, and at 683 milliseconds is the last frame when you can fully see any of his head. Contrast that with player 1's perspective, who can fully see player 2's head 851 milliseconds into the clip, with his head leaving vision at 953 milliseconds. This demonstrates a delay of 203 and 270 respectively. Funny enough, player 1 can see player 2 for 57 extra milliseconds as player 2 gets into cover. So in this clip, it looks like movement didn't change much. Now let's analyze the combat of this clip. Player 1 first clicks the mouse at the 670 millisecond mark. It takes 43 milliseconds to the 713 millisecond mark to see the muzzle flash. You can see player 2 get hit on player 1 screen 761 milliseconds into the clip, or 50 milliseconds after the muzzle flash from player 1. Player 2 gets hit with the bullet 806 milliseconds into the clip, and you can begin to see player 1's muzzle flash from player 2's camera 985 milliseconds into the clip. So from the time you click until you see the muzzle flash, it takes 43 milliseconds. And then from that muzzle flash, it takes 88 milliseconds for the other player to get hit, and 272 milliseconds to see the muzzle flash. Again, at first glance, these results don't seem to have improved much, but let's take a look at the data from 20 samples. Post patch, with an average ping around 27 milliseconds, movement delay was a minimum of 195 milliseconds between the two perspectives, a maximum of 287 milliseconds with an average of 246 milliseconds of a delay. That is not great, but I didn't see as many spikes after the patch. Seeing the other player's shot took a minimum of 250 milliseconds, with a maximum of 295 and an average of 268 milliseconds. This is marginally better than it was pre-patch. For hit registration, I observed a 76 millisecond minimum, 92 millisecond average, and 115 millisecond maximum. Again, these results are marginally better, mainly because they're more consistent. So at a low ping, it seems like movement didn't change much, but shooting and hit reg got slightly better. What happens when you increase the ping that you're playing at though? Let's first review a pre-patch clip with a ping of roughly 130 milliseconds where player one is peaking player two and they both shoot at each other. Player one can begin to see the corner of player two's head 166 milliseconds into this clip. It isn't until 250 milliseconds into the clip that he can begin to see player 2's full head. Player 2 can begin to see the corner of player 1's head 431 milliseconds into the clip, 
and can't completely see it until 551 milliseconds into the clip. This shows a delay of 301 milliseconds between the two perspectives. Yikes. The last frame that player 1 gives you player 2's full head is at the 1081 millisecond mark, and player 2's head is no longer visible after 1185 milliseconds. From player 2's perspective, the last frame he can see player 1 is at the 1333 millisecond mark, and he can no longer see player 1's head at the 1501 millisecond mark. That's a 316 millisecond delay in perspectives when moving back into cover. Now let's check out the combat. Player 1 clicks the mouse at 483 milliseconds. 50 milliseconds later, you can see the muzzle flash from his perspective. At 583 milliseconds, you can see the hit on Player 1's screen to Player 2. Player 2 doesn't see the hit until 183 milliseconds after Player 1 saw his own muzzle flash. At 833 milliseconds, you can see Player 1's muzzle flash from Player 2's screen. You might find something interesting at the 1268 millisecond mark. Player 2 shot on Player 1 is visible to Player 1, but after they can no longer see Player 2, so essentially it looks like they're hit behind the wall. Now here's the summary of the results from 20 samples pre-patch with an average ping of 128 milliseconds. Movement delay was a minimum of 298 milliseconds between the two perspectives, a maximum of 366 milliseconds, with an average of 340 milliseconds of a delay. Seeing the shot took a minimum of 294 milliseconds, with a maximum of 368 milliseconds, and an average of 339 milliseconds. Hit registration was a minimum of 181 milliseconds, with a maximum of 261, with an average of 212. This is bad, but it seems like the results are fairly similar to the ones with 30 ping, but you just add 100 ping to account for the additional latency. So it seems like it scales linearly with ping. Now let's take a look at how high ping performs after the patch. In this clip, player 1 will be peeking player 2 and shooting at him before going back in cover. First taking a look at movement, player 1 can see the edge of player 2's head at 283 milliseconds. They can see player 2's full head at 316 milliseconds. At 613 milliseconds, player 2 can see the edge of player 1's head, and they can see it completely at 696 milliseconds. 380 milliseconds of peeker's advantage. That is crazy. The last frame player 1 can see player 2's full head is at 880 milliseconds, and it goes out of view at 920 milliseconds. From player 2's perspective, they can see player 1's full head last at 1,085 milliseconds, and they can no longer see it at 1,200. Moving on to combat. Player 1 first clicks his mouse at 768 milliseconds. They see the muzzle flash at 830 milliseconds, and you can see the hit from Player 1's perspective because of the movement of the other character's gun at 866 milliseconds. Player 2 gets hit at 1 second and sees the muzzle flash after that at 1,166 milliseconds. Similar pattern and subpar results, but let's check out the data from the 20 samples post-patch with an average ping of 136 milliseconds. Movement delay had a minimum of 278 milliseconds between the two perspectives, a maximum of 391 milliseconds with an average of 334 milliseconds of a delay. Seeing the other player shoot took a minimum of 313 milliseconds, a maximum of 357 milliseconds, and an average of 327 milliseconds. Hit registration was a minimum of 165 milliseconds, a maximum of 187 milliseconds, and an average of 165 milliseconds. This is all pretty bad, except for hit registration. And it didn't seem to get better with this last patch. It seems like the server is taking around 200 milliseconds to register player movement and the fact that someone shot. Now here's a breakdown of everything that we went over. Pre-patch and post-patch, both low and high ping. Feel free to pause it to get a better look at the graph, because there's a lot of information there. There are two takeaways that I got from observing all these numbers, and it's that we did slightly improve performance, although very marginally, and the numbers do seem to be more consistent. But other than that, we have a very long way to go before combat feels as good as other games. So this patch didn't help netcode in your average scenarios, but let's take a look at some packet loss examples to show what it did do. In these examples, I have the same setup, but I'm introducing packet loss to one of the players, inadvertently increasing their ping a bit. 
In this first example, watch how player 2 with the packet loss doesn't appear on player 1 screen until around 700 milliseconds after player 2 can see them. This would be very unfair, but watch as they shoot player 1. You can see player 1's gun on player 2's screen and the aim punch it gets. He clearly hits him, but it never shows as a hit from player 1's perspective. So the hit never registers on the person who doesn't have packet loss. That's a positive improvement, so you can't abuse packet losses easily. However, there are some downsides with what was introduced. Watch how player 1 first sees the enemy. With DLSS on, the enemy appears to be like a shadow. I would classify this as a bug where they didn't focus on how the network changes would affect DLSS. I didn't do the same testing for FSR, but I would definitely take this into consideration when choosing to enable DLSS or FSR. Another thing that is very apparent when someone has packet loss is the delay or rubber banding of movement. Watch in this clip where I'm trying to strafe back and forth and the other player with packet loss is either further behind or ahead, but then teleports back. They also appear delayed on the other perspective. In my opinion, this one's a wash and is situational to which player has the advantage. Battlestate also said that they fixed how players with packet loss would suddenly appear from around a corner. In this clip, the moving player appears to be moving twice as fast from the perspective of the stationary player, and the stationary player is roughly 900 milliseconds to one second behind. Whether or not that shot would have actually registered if it hit is a different story, but it looks like there are situations where it still happens. And then there are situations when movement animations get messed up because of this packet loss, and we seem to have all the issues that we had in the past and nothing appears fixed. And finally, you have situations like this, where the player is able to peek and get a shot off, but rubber band back before the peek. I guess it's good from a synchronization perspective, but they should not be able to go around a corner and see exactly where the enemy is. These changes may be the foundation to build better netcode, but this patch certainly did not improve it. I am hopeful that it will get better because there are some subtle signs of it, but there's nothing concrete yet. Hopefully this helped you understand some of the specifics about what was in this patch mainly a tiny improvement to synchronization and some changes to how packet loss works from both players' perspectives. Props to those of you that made it this far. This was probably the hardest video I've ever done. I've been at it for weeks. If you found it useful, I'd really appreciate you smacking that subscribe button. And if you want to discuss these findings more, drop a comment down below or feel free to join my Discord server linked in the description. Hopefully you found this video helpful or at least interesting. If you did, Smash the like out of that ship button, subscribe to stay in the know regarding Tarkov mechanics, and I will see you on the battlefield. CZTL out.